Grace and peace be with you. Welcome to this service from St Luke's Uniting Church, Highton. I'm Paul Stevens, the ordained minister in placement. This week, our focus is on the book from the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, called the Book of Ruth. The Book of Ruth stands out for a number of reasons, one of which is that all the key players are women. But as they say, more of that later. As we gather this morning, let's light the Christ candle. And so, so doing, let's remember that Christ is the light of the world. And the light of Christ's love can illuminate the darkest of places. The readings today come from last Sunday's lectionary readings and the psalm for last Sunday was Psalm 146. Psalm 146 includes wonderful words of praise and hope. And as we begin our time of worship, let me share a few verses with you as our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's have, having heard those words of praise, let's continue with a prayer. Let's pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you people. God, our hope and life. Triune community of perfect love. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Praise be your name. You were before all things. You are the author of all things. You brought life and light out of nothing. Yet you are closer to us than we can imagine and you always remain faithful to us and all your creation. Faithful in love, faithful to save, faithful to tend, faithful to share. And so we worship you with all our heart and all our mind and all our strength. And we rejoice to know that when our hearts are misled, your heart is to forgive. When our thinking is confused, you show us the truth that is found in the way of Jesus. When our strength fails, you draw near and hold us close. Hear us in the quiet as we confess to you where we have turned away from you or others and where we need your healing and forgiveness. We give you thanks, O God, that in you is life and forgiveness beyond measure. You uphold the cause of the oppressed and give food to the hungry. You set prisoners free and give sight to the blind. You lift up those who are bowed down and love the righteous. You who watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, who frustrates the ways of the wicked, you, Lord God, reign forever for all generations. In the name of Christ, we pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book of Ruth is found early on amongst the books of the Old Testament. You've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Joshua, Judges, and then Ruth. The opening line tells us that it is set in the time of the judges. But unlike the accounts of treachery and violence that make the book of Judges what it is, which is a fairly torrid kind of read, the book of Ruth is a story of faithfulness and kindness. Not that it is a story without drama and suffering. As you will hear, it begins with a family from, of all places, Bethlehem, which means house of bread, becoming refugees in Moab because of famine in their town and homeland. 
And then we are told quickly after this that in Moab, Elimelech, the, the head of the family, dies and his two son-in-laws, uh, Elimelech and Marlon, also die. So Naomi, Ruth and Orpha are left as uh, widows. Let's listen to the story which we're going to enact now uh, and uh, we will hear Claire being Naomi, Jean being Orpha and Sue will take the role of Ruth. Now, just before we go any further, if you're a young person and you've been watching this, this might be a chance to get fiddling on the internet and have a look for uh, resources related to the story of Ruth. There's some wonderful resources you can use to help you learn about the story of Ruth if you go a hunting. Let's listen now as we share in the dramatised version of our scripture reading for today. The first reading is Ruth 1, 1 to 5. Elimelech moves his family to Moab. In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah led his, left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Marlon and Kilion. They were Aphrodites from Bethlehem in the land of Judea, and they reached Moab, they settled there. Then Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman called Orpah, and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Marlon and Kilion died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. No. no. We want to go with you to your people. Why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' home, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has turned against me. And again they wept together. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So the two of them continued on their journey. When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. Some women asked, 
Is it really Naomi? Don't call me Naomi. Instead, call me Mara, for the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. They arrived in Bethlehem in late spring, at the beginning of the barley harvest. The next part of the story tells how Ruth became the wife of Boaz, Naomi's relative. It ends with the birth of a son to Boaz and Ruth named Obed. Obed was the grandfather of King David. Portions of this reading are sometimes read at wedding services, which makes sense, because Ruth makes such a complete commitment to Naomi. Ruth makes clear to Naomi that she is not planning to disappear anytime soon. She is in it for the long haul. And this commitment, of course, is not unlike the vows a couple make to each other in the covenant of marriage. Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I, if I allow anything but death to separate us. But it does strike me as rather darkly ironic for a wedding service that the story of Ruth commences with the death of three husbands. For this is not a story disconnected from tragedy and tribulation. As Naomi says to the women of Bethlehem when she returns home, call me Mara, for my life has been bitter. Things were generally not easy for Naomi, Ruth and Orpah. Naomi, Ruth and Orpah lived in a time of tension and conflict. Just read the book of Judges if you want to know more. And the peoples of Moab and Judah were hardly the best of friends. For a start, their communities did not share a common religion. And just being women living in that era brought significant challenges because women lacked formal status. And as widows, they had little in the way of security. The prophets of the Old Testament considered a touchstone of the nation's adherence to the way of God as how three of the least powerful groups of people in the land were cared for. Were cared for. And those three groups of people were the orphan and the stranger and the widow. So they were widows. And Naomi and Ruth were also at various times strangers. You might remember that the early that early in the book of Exodus, Moses has a son with Zipporah that they call Gershom. And Gershom means stranger or alien in a strange or foreign land. Elimelech, Naomi, Malon, Kilion, when they first came to Moab to escape the famine in Judea, were strangers in a strange land. And by leaving Moab to stay with Naomi, Ruth found herself a stranger in a strange land. What strikes you when you think about this story? Is it the roles that women play in this story with men taking very much the back seat? Is it the way this story underlines the way individuals can break through the barriers that exist between people of different cultures and backgrounds? Is it what this story says to us about caring for the least able to care for themselves in our society? the orphan, the stranger and the widow? Is it Ruth and Orpah's desire to care for their mother-in-law? Or is it Ruth's selfless commitment to stick with Naomi? Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely 
if I allow anything but death to separate us. In our era, in which so many voices seem to be about trying to divide people because of their cultural and other backgrounds, here we see enacted the reality which is central to Jewish and Christian understandings, that each person is made in the image of God, that each person is unique and of great worth. Can I encourage you to go back to the book of Ruth and to read it and see what strikes you from this wonderful story of love and commitment. Listen now to a hymn written for the 40th wedding anniversary of the Renards, I th Renards, I think that's how you pronounce their name, a couple who had today's reading at their wedding. Let's continue in prayer. Loving God, you call us to walk in love as Christ walked in love and bless us with the Holy Spirit and gifts of ministry to enable us to live out this calling. We are sent to care for those who, like Naomi, Ruth and Orpah, had no security. And so we pray for those who have no food because of famine or because of COVID. We pray for those impacted by the damaging of our planet's environment and pray for the enacting of global policies which enable good stewardship of your creation. We remember those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray that when they feel alone that you would meet them in the compassion, you would meet them in the compassion of others. We think of those whose world has been turned upside down by the pandemic. Grant that they would know the support and care of others, the help they need and the strength to carry on. And we hold before you, Lord, other concerns that are on our hearts, perhaps our own concerns, perhaps the concerns and needs of those to whom we are very close. 
Lord Jesus, you suffer with us and through your resurrection have taken our suffering into the heart of God. Help those who are alone and vulnerable know that you have been there too, that you are with them, even as they struggle to find hope from any source. And for us, Lord, help us to be open and willing to be a part of the answer to these prayers, to be your hands to care, your ears to listen, the body through which you might bring healing and life. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we continue with a prayer which was taught to his disciples by our Lord, the Lord's Prayer. Hair mer vor herginesis, sur pieriti anunco, egesse arcaitunco, eritin gamco, vorbes herginesi herbri, zhats mer hana bazort, dur mezaisor, tor mezes bardis mer, vorbes yev mek torunk merots bardavanats, yev midan irismes i portsutun, ay pergia i charen. Zikoye arkayutyun yev zorutyun yev park havidyanas. Amen. Amen. Hayr mer vor herginises. We move to uh, to share something of what's coming up in the life of the congregation at St Luke's and if you want to find out more about the congregation if you're a someone who's just discovered us on the internet, then go to our, well, you probably found our website, but our website is stlukesuca.org.au and you can find out all you want to do, know about our congregation there and also contact us if you'd like to, uh, to share something or ask a question or whatever it is that you, you wish to do in t terms of communicating with us. A few things to share in terms of things that are coming up. Um, I'm not sure why, sorry folks, this isn't supposed to do this. There we go. The, um, just to let you know that each Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. we have a prayer time on Zoom. And again, if you go to the website, you can find how to link in with that prayer site. That's open. That's open to anyone who would just like to spend some time sharing and offering prayer for others. We are, well, the congregation is Support, has supported for many years the Ministry of the Leprosy Mission and you can see information there about how you can buy cards, Christmas cards, which support the Leprosy Mission. Valerie Grills is, is the person who looks after this and you can see that she's been prepared to offer her phone number. So contact her if you need to, or if you'd like to buy some cards to help the Leprosy Mission and to share some of that Christmas joy with others. Now, I guess the, well, we, we move now to forthcoming services. This coming Thursday, we have a worship service at 2 p.m., which is a midweek service, and that is for those who have been vaccinated. But coming up on, uh, from November the 21st, we're returning to 9.30 a.m. in-person worship. F the 9.30 a.m. service will be for those who are vaccinated, but then from November the 28th, that's the first Sunday in Advent, so Christmas is coming, folks. The first Sunday in Advent, we'll be also offering a, an 11 o'clock service in the Lane Memorial Hall, uh, which, at which numbers are limited. But at that service, there will be no question asked about people's vaccination status. Let's just bow in prayer now again and offer all that we, God has blessed us with to God again and seek his leading in our living. Let's pray. Lord God, you have given us more than we ask for and more than we deserve. May we show a like generosity in all that we do for you and for our neighbours. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, go into the week knowing that God goes with you. There is nowhere that you can go, nothing you can experience where God is not present. And may the God of hope and life bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.